I look forward to being able to create bases across the planet. Hey everybody, welcome back to Perspera. Hope you're having a great day today. So I've been playing this a lot on Twitch, and uh, I'm actually tempted to do a speed run to see how uh, how fast we can get water to show up on the place. Because uh, I've kind of I've, I've learned a whole lot from streaming it, and and I figured out a couple of things. Uh, the first thing is that I've got to change up the research because this right here does not actually get me anything as far as I'm aware. I'm not entirely sure why I would need this right now because sectors are locked. We'll go ahead and talk about that in a second. Uh, but what I do need, though, is the first level in engineering here. This ups the build limit. So just the, the, the tech tree and the way the tech tree works is sort of something that I didn't quite understand at first. I was thinking that once we did something here, it would unlock this and we'd be able to do these. It, for some reason, I did not equate these milestones as something that was researchable um, because it already has this uh, at the beginning. So anyway, you, you do do this one. You do this one it gives you the building limit uh this one here again another 200 this one another 300 this one another 400 etc and it just keeps going up uh from there in addition to um you know that each other tier from the other technology trees also do a very similar thing so for uh engineering it's uh, the building limit for space though it's the spaceport limit and for biotech it's a bump to the number of colonists that you are maxed out at. Now, in this playthrough, we're maxed out at 100 at... Sorry, we are maxed out at uh, 100 buildings right now and 550 colonists. I don't know if we're going to need more than 550 for this playthrough because of my time restrictions and stuff. We'll see. Uh, but what I am going to do is now that engineering is kind of kicking off here, and uh, I need to see this go all the way up so that we can make more buildings. The other thing I've learned is it's this site. that The lab and research location is this specific site here. Um, I, I am doing a site, but it, I think this wants the specific site right here. It's It didn't make this clear to me. Applying Earth technologies to the Martian environment is a challenge. Many techniques and procedures will not apply here. I am excited to make engineering progress in this planet. I'm excited for you to do that too, Amy. Uh, so I didn't, uh, I didn't pick this up as this one specifically being what this wanted, but uh, some people made some comments about it, uh, that one being the case. So we'll go ahead and uh, see if we can make that happen. Uh, the first thing I wanna do is I wanna start looking at getting our uh, mines upgraded here, I think. Uh, and then I also want to get factories upgraded and stuff too. The wind turbines are actually pretty interesting. They produce more power than the solar panels, but it's variable. Um, we can take a look at that in a little bit. But uh, the other thing I wanted to show you guys, though, is the faster roads and all that stuff. So let's go get faster roads for now. And then we'll switch over and show you guys some other stuff after that. So our building limit, because we got that first tier of research, our building limit's now gone up to 200. So what I'd like to do, now that I can actually build more things is I'm going to go ahead and drop another solar panel here. We're going to go ahead and prioritize that so that they jump on this as fast as possible. And then we're going to tear this one down. I think I'll just do that now. We'll just tear this one down as this one goes up. Um, it's a nice hot swap kind of thing there. Uh, we're also going to need to kind of drop another one anyway. So why don't we go ahead and just do that? Maybe... Oh, I don't know. It doesn't really matter where we go. So I'll just put it over... Somewhere we've already scanned. Let's put it here. It's fine. So, with that one going down now, this one's out of the way. And we can put a research outpost right here now if we want to. And again, the veins and how they'll figure out which direction the roads and stuff should go. I think it's awesome. Uh, I'll show you guys upgraded roads once that research is done. To get off our power grid for a second. And so, like, power grid was struggling a little bit. It no longer is. Yeah, it no longer is. So what are we what are we weak on right now? Is it chemicals? We're gonna want we're gonna want a good amount of chemicals because not only do we need to keep up with the food, but we also need to start kicking some greenhouse gases into the atmosphere uh, to start uh, you know the whole terraforming process if we want to. I'm gonna drop a silicon mine here just to help on that resource. I'm gonna drop an iron mine right here to help on that resource. I'm gonna drop another worker hub here and here to kind of help with worker supplies because 18 workers is not enough we need so many more workers so many more workers and you can basically just spam the hubs 
to make that happen. So I'm just gonna spam these hubs really quick. Upgrading the routes will allow my workers to move faster. Efficiency is key to our success. Just checking the, uh, wow. All these buildings in the middle here are not even covered by, are not covered by any type of uh, uh, maintenance. So let's get some maintenance put in, like right in the middle if I can, like right about, oh, right there. That seems good. Let's get the, the maintenance put in. And I want you to go ahead and make this be, yeah, your biggest priority right now. Because a lot of these buildings are going to get shut down, right? And we're going to need, you know, the maintenance center is going to make polymers and all that stuff to, uh, to go ahead and help with that. But you notice now we have a sandstorm, right? And so solar power is way less effective. So we're going to have lots of buildings down during the storm. But once the storm is settled, we'll be all right. So I've got uh, a whole lot of sources of stuff here. I'm thinking chemicals. I'm thinking we drop for aluminum here. We're going to go with some carbon mine here. I'm just dropping a ton of resources because we can. Um, but eventually, we're going to use these chemicals for something other than just food. And I think there's all there is is carbon from here. I'm, I'm good on carbon. Yeah, I'm good on carbon. Okay. So the research location, that's the, the main story mission. And I'm actually curious to see whether or not researching this is going to be something that unlocks progression. Because if I take a look, zoom out really quick. And I go to the orbital map. You're going to notice that we're locked into sections. You start every game in sector four. Now, you don't necessarily do that in sandbox. But in the story, you start in sector four. And there's sector nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, of course. And then there's one, two, three at the top. And then uh, 10, 11, 12 down here at the bottom. And you are limited in where you can build based on the sectors, right? So I cannot build here. I need sector permission to build here. And in the sandbox game, when we were playing, so I was trying to like go as fast as I could to see how far we could get to progress. And we got pretty far. Um, but I couldn't, I, I basically filled my entire section of stuff, but I couldn't go any further because the game just won't let me unlock an additional section. And I, I don't know how to do that. There doesn't seem to be any way to do that, to unlock a new section. And I think it's kind of like a pre-release gatekeeping mechanic here. I, th I think I'm, I'm, I'm not allowed to do it because of just, you know, trying to keep it to where people can't go too far before it's released. I think that's kind of what it is, which is fine. All right, Faster Roads is done. Uh, I want to do mine upgrade, but... I want to also get started on the greenhouse gases and stuff. And let's up. I don't really care about the colonist limit going up. I care about the greenhouse gas thing. So I'm going to go ahead and get that started. And then we're going to have a lot of solar panels and stuff here too. Now, some of these resources, they're going to take a bit because we're going to be spread out, right? Biological technologies are a crucial part of the terraforming plan. It is wise to get started on this research. So some of our resources are going to be really far away from where we need it. Take iron, for example, right? Iron here is pretty far away from where it needs to be. There's an iron mine here, I, I suppose. But the steel factory and stuff is over there, and there's one over here. So this source is pretty far away. What we could do about that is we can look to upgrade the roads. So to do that, I'm going to click the maintenance facility right now. It's kind of the central point amongst all these different things. Although, one second here. That's what I suspected. Okay, so I can't actually do anything with this because it's too close. So first, I'm going to tear this down. And I really think there needs to be a move building function built into the game. And I, 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 how this would work, because you get 100% of your resources back when you scrap a building. And they don't necessarily take those resources and immediately manufacture a new one if you tell them to do so. They won't necessarily do that straight up. Even if you do this, they don't necessarily do that, right? So, this whole process, that's nice and all, but what I really wish there was is a move building function to where I would say, take this building and move it here. 
and then the drones would disassemble and reassemble using the exact same components. It would earmark those components for that specific building, and they would just tear it down and build it back up right away because it's 100% refunded. It would take a lot less time. We wouldn't have to go through this whole process. So I, I really hope that they consider doing that because if you're going to give me 100% of my resources, you might as well as far as I'm concerned. All right, first level of biotech is done on research. So we're going to start with Greenhouse Gas Factory because I want to show you guys this stuff. I want to start getting into the terraforming stuff and show you how some of that stuff works. Um, but I'm also going to need another launch pad for what I'm doing. So there's a spaceport. And I'm going to want to get another one. Let's put it... Uh, we could probably set it. It doesn't really matter. This one's not bringing colonists. But also, since the colonists come in on an airship anyway, and they kind of like, you know use their blimp to get where they're going anyway doesn't really matter interesting oh my spaceport limits reach right okay so i need to do the research before i can do that too uh also cool thing research is saved so i started doing this one right and the rps i invested in this get to stay in this so you don't lose your research for switching and i love that i love that they've done that so that's awesome but if we go down the uh space tree we get our new space new, another spaceport unlock and that enables us to do more things at once more quests and things in orbital view at one time because we have more than one spaceport uh, so we can do things eventually like redirecting asteroids that are made of certain substances and crashing them into mars because that's a thing you should do um, we can air break an ice asteroid crash a comet build a space elevator we can even take dimos and crash that <laughs> crash the moon into the planet i love it do all sorts of things uh we can import nitrogen from titan import ice from europa and magnetic uh get the magnetic shield up too so like there's a whole lot of things we can do we just need the uh we need the resources to do them and we need the uh the space the, the launch pad there you go the launch pad so I've got three iron mines here, right? And they're gonna be kicking out the iron pretty fast, but unless I have the workers constantly going through here and you see how slow they are, right? I need to do something to speed this up. One thing I could do is advance the roads a little bit more. So I'm gonna say from this worker hub all the way to, let's say, you know what, we'll, we'll, do, we'll do this. Put a storage center. Oh, I can't, well, there's one right there actually, yeah. All right, so let's say from this worker hub, we're going to click this upgrade ways button all the way to this storage unit. I'm going to click that. Now you see the cost. It was like nine steel and, uh, you know, some carbon. So it's going to take a little bit of resources to do that. But when they've decided to, when they brought them all over there, they're going to pave these roads and upgrade them. And now they will move significantly faster on this path. It goes from, and it will tell you that in the research tree too, if you go to engineering. Uh, so the faster roads takes in, takes the normal 240 speed and increases it to 400. Then you go to fastest roads. It takes that 400 speed, increases it to 640. And then the hyperloop is freaking cool. And I can't wait to show you that. Um, the hyperloop is a different type of construction it goes underground and it sends things super fast it's the movement is the super way and it has 4000 speed it's it's really nice and i can't wait to show that to you too because it's really it's really really cool it's expensive as well it takes a lot to build it so they have to deliver the resources to each one of these paths but once they've done that they'll be able to transport this stuff at least over to the storage unit significantly faster on that road and we can do that to a lot of other places too if i see that traffic is moving exceptionally fast or exceptionally congested i suppose in certain areas i can go ahead and look at that right so there's different views and f1 shows you sector congestion and road saturation so you can think of this like city skylines in a way and you can kind of see which roads are being used the most often by your uh by your drones and you can look, use this as a guide for saying you know this road here is being used a lot i should probably look into upgrading this right so i can go in and say okay this road's being used a lot how about we have you all the way to i think i'm just going to go here and by making that road faster 
it should help to help with that congestion just a little bit, right? This road here looks like it's also being pretty congested. So why don't we go ahead and upgrade that all the way to uh, here. And so they're going to go ahead and upgrade those roads. And you can, again, just use the game's information to dictate your decisions moving forward. I know I'm not the best at doing that. This is one of those games where doing that is a really good idea. And I'm not the best at doing that half the time. Because a lot of times, I just want things now, man. And I don't, like, necess I don't necessarily use info of the best. But I have fun. And I hope you're having fun, too. I'm going to drop an aluminum mine there. Because we're starting to get a little bit down on that. And the chemicals. Uh, we need the greenhouse gas factory first. So I'm playing this at 16 times speed. And I'll probably keep playing at 16. Soon, I will be able to pump greenhouse gases into the atmosphere. This will not be difficult. The humans already did it to Earth, after all. As we release greenhouse gases, the planet's temperature will rise. Then the dry ice caps will dissipate. More CO2 encourages rising temperatures. Just the runaway effect we need. So, uh, yeah, that's that's our first task. Uh, and then we're going to start looking at releasing O2 and all sorts of things here. And eventually we're going to get up here. Right now, the polar ice, ice caps are rich in frozen CO2. We can sublimate these caps to pressurize the atmosphere. And as we warm the planet, those will start to melt. But there's also research to kind of speed that process up. And one of those things is the uh, black polar dust. We could do that. And I think I already have that research. So can I? Yes, I can get that started as long as I have another launch pad. So this one right here, they're already on their way to Mars. I cannot cancel this until they are back at Earth. Once the ship returns to Earth, I can cancel this. It's not very clear in the UI as to when that's possible. Um, I guess it's just sort of one of those makes sense things. But I wish they would give you like some sort of visual indication because otherwise people will click this button and be like, why doesn't this work? Which is what I did on Twitch. All right, so I'm going to look at um, power looks okay, but it could be better. And let's take a look and see if there's any other resources that are really concerning. I think water. Water is something that is always eluding me. And we might want to reposition these scanning hubs because they're a little bit far away now. It looks like also our maintenance system isn't quite isn't quite covering everything. We should probably have another maintenance hub. Let's put it right there. Did it not accept it? I heard the sound, but I don't think it accepted it. No, it didn't. It does that sometimes there all right greenhouse gas factory is about to be done once that research is done we'll look at uh getting another spaceport but i also want to lay down the greenhouse gas factory because i think it's super cool and i want to show it to you are there any other research posts i could do uh not really are they actually researching that one now not yet you know, if I tell them to prioritize this, I wonder if the humans will move here and do that. I don't know. Um, let's go back to space, and I want to do this one so that we get our spaceport limit bumped up to uh, three total. But now that we have greenhouse gas as possible, we're going to go into the terraforming menu that's just here. We have a terraforming menu now. And greenhouse gas factory is one of them. It just takes one chemical and puts out greenhouse gases. So I'm going to take and let's just pop this right here. And we can do another one too. How about one over here? And all this is going to do like is is just going to send greenhouse or chemicals, which is right next to a chemical factory now. It's just going to take chemicals and burn them. And the, the building models look really cool in this game. I know they're a little bit, like, big, right? They're way not proportionally sized, but they're really cool. Like, I think they're really well done. They're ginormous. All right, big greenhouse gas factories, two of them. And we're going to see that this number up here, greenhouse gases, 
So how this works is the base temperature is negative 63.1 Celsius. Current temperature is negative 61. Now this is impacted by or CO2 having a temperature, O2 having a temperature increase, and greenhouse gases having a temperature increase. The first step of many in creating new space technology. So what will end up happening here is our greenhouse gases temperature effect will begin to rise and it will offset against the base to give us a new temperature. So greenhouse gases is going to keep rising slowly. Uh, it's going to look fast because I'm in 16 times speed, but it's going to be rising slowly and it's going to get people uh, or get the place a little bit warmer. First level of space technologies. Okay, I want to do the... I think I want to do my mining upgrades actually. All right, mine upgrades. And then we're probably going to need some more. Uh, let's get another aerological scanner. I think I'm going to put it out here. I'm going to put you there, and then I'm going to put a worker hub right here. And we're going to put a solar farm right out this way to power you all. That ought to do it. That may be on a resource. But if it's not, I'm not. I'll build it. I'll rebuild it if I have to. All right, and then we are at almost our worker limit. So why don't we get that going too? And then let me take a look at maintenance really quick. We are covered, perfect. Okay, so we have the ability to make another spaceport and I'm gonna put one right here. And I actually wanna prioritize this because I have other things I wanna do besides bringing people. Speaking of which, zoom out. Let me see where this process is. Okay, it's at the end of the month here. So again, I'm in really fast speed, so this should be happening quickly. I can also cancel this and then do the polar, uh, the black polar dust if I want to. And I do want to. Um, yeah, I, I do. Because we're going to get things terraformed. So another thing that I've noticed about when you're placing buildings, you can see how like there's a lot of different information here right and this multicolored. but remember we're a computer we're seeing things through the eyes of a machine and like specifically we're seeing things through amy who is in orbit around uh can we see amy's satellite like amy's satellite specifically we should be able to see. i thought we could see it amy is literally like, if you're wondering where this ai is she's in orbit um around around mars and so it's like specifically we are that's where the, her physical brain is located, if you were. Her hardware is in orbit around Mars. And so anyway, she sees all this data, and this is all height information. And when you go to place a building- A mine upgrade will allow me to extract resources faster. They will also require less maintenance. A win-win. A win-win, yes. Um, it, you, if you go to place a building, let's say we place it like here, there's no warnings except for the fact that there won't be any power if I place it here, which I like that notification. It's like, you won't have power if you place it here. I like that. This is too far away from any connections, but as you get closer, as you get over more this way, you're gonna notice it says floodable area. So floodable area is interesting because you can work here, you can do things here, you can be whatever you want, but as you begin to terraform, your buildings will start to get destroyed when the moisture comes up from the ground and the ocean begins to form because this ends up being a big ocean, right? And you're technically in the area that's really low ground. So if you wanna get these things, you kinda of need to do it before you introduce water onto the planet, you know? That's, that's another thing that I thought was like really cool about it is like, you can you can go and terraform as fast as you want but if you want to get the cool things you kind of have to do it you know like a little bit quicker so i'm gonna get worker hubs kind of out this way this is going to increase our the number of workers we're allowed to have but it's also just the easy way to extend this whole grid we'll get a solar panel there We'll get one there and we'll get one over like so. Now, all of this, of course, is in the floodable area, but we can now get these little, like this lander. Uh, I think I can actually, did I go too close? No. So I can now get the lander if I want to. I don't want a greenhouse gas factory, although we haven't scanned any of this yet. Um, and we may, we may want to know where stuff is over here. So why don't we put one of these scanners over here too? 
And I'm queuing up a whole lot of things to build, right? But the thing is, especially with the worker hubs, which I can go ahead and prioritize those specifically, with these worker hubs, it's just going to enable us to have more workers. More workers means more hauling, more jobs at once. It's just it's a win-win. <laughs> it's what it is. It's just a bunch of win-win. And I want a research post here, but it's got a block sector. Ah, that's that's in the other sector. Lame. I want to get to that sector, but at least we can get this one. And because of that, I think I am going to just cancel that one because I don't need to go out that way anymore. Are you in a block sector? No, you're good. We'll put that worker hub here then. And then are you able to cover it? Are you able to cover that with power? Where's my solar panel right here? You should have, yeah, you should be covering that. We should be, we should be fine over there. So all of that happening is great. And we'll just let that go on its own time. Pending dust devil. We'll let that go on its own time. As far as construction goes, I want to check in on my rocket pad. Here we go. So I now have the ability to run two missions at once. So let's zoom out. And I want to click on black polar dust. And now I have I have SP01, but 00 is the one doing the colonist migration. So I'm gonna add this as a task for 01. It's gonna gather the resources required to do it. Then it will take a little bit of time to go ahead and uh, prepare it and then it will launch it and then it executes I, I don't know exactly the, the i wish i could like see a description of each step because that would be a really cool thing to do but uh i think what it is is like it takes this long to prepare it because it's already done and then five months to you know go up and and do it maybe and then one month to see the effects of it i, I don't i don't know if it's probably nothing like that but Anyway, um, we'll improve the efficiency of all mines. So we have mining level two, but we have to manually do that for every mine, which is not a big deal because some mines are probably not going to last much longer. They're going to get depleted. Let's go ahead and get, um, you know what? Let's go into engineering again. We'll get the building limit raised up because I'm going to approach the building limit pretty quick. Actually, I'm already at 150. Been, ex been expanding quite a bit, right? And now we're scanning new sectors. And these things aren't very expensive. Like to keep and maintain and keep them up. So I've decided like instead of just tearing one down and rebuilding it, I'm just going to build another one. Unless I'm at like, you know, a building limit, I might as well let it scan other sectors faster, you know? So we'll let this whole process snowball that way. And then where does the sector end exactly? Oh, we got lots of time. Cool. So if we take a look and go to F4, this is our scan sectors area. You're going to notice that over here, there's this purple area. And this is an area that's really rich in chemicals. So there's certain areas around Mars that are really rich in a specific resource. And we can go ahead and like work on getting that too. Um, this is over here by Alba Mons. There's Olympus Mons right there. And over by Olympus Mons, there's a whole bunch of iron here chemicals and water and all sorts of stuff we can't go there because it's a different sector but we can go here and we're going to want these chemicals we have reached the second stage of engineering we are making great progress i'm going to put this there because it's the only sector in this whole area that's already scanned uh perseverance rover research outpost cool status is research is complete from planetary science officer eric arthur blair report today we found the perseverance rover this little robot had a drill to collect core samples to search for signs of microbial life. One could say it was an old colleague of mine. I'm part of the geochemical team, and my job is to also is, is also to measure the physical and chemical properties of the Martian soil. Records don't say if the Perseverance found any sign of life on Mars in its days. I, I guess this planet knows how to keep it secret. Cool. Um, so we have a lot of buildings actually between, like I want the scanner over here, so we're just going to drop hubs. Hubs to connect all that up together. Drop another hub here, might as well drop another hub here. And we're going to go with solar there and there. And then we'll make sure that it's all maintained when we get there uh, by doing it right about, let's go here with it. Yeah, let's go here with it. 
I don't want to get too redundant. There's actually a maintenance depot already right there. We'll go there with it. All right. So we'll get another scanner on, on this side. But there's going to be chemicals right here. This is going to be really rich in chemicals. And I've found that, at least over here, which I guess is maybe not uh, the best example because there is water rich here. But I did find that there was quite a bit of water around this area too, over in this area. So uh, I'm, I'm hoping that the chemical area also has lots of water. We'll see. Because, of course, the more water we have, the more food we can make. And the for more food we can make... Structure integrity is bad here. Do I not have any... Oh, wow. It's just like this little area where it's not covered. Um, You know what? Let's rebuild that. I don't want to make another maintenance depot for that. It's just a... It's just a worker hub. We'll put it over here instead. And then we'll make up for that, actually, by putting another one over here. Uh, second and second level engineering is complete and now we can get factory upgrades if we want to uh, So I'm gonna I'm gonna go ahead and do that because those are really nice Give me worker hub right there That'll make up for that whole little that little gap in our maintenance coverage And I love the F, how they've utilized F keys for this stuff, too. It's very cool. I still wish you could do customizable hotkeys I'm not uh I'm not saying you shouldn't be able to do that. I still like the idea of having those customizable, but I do like how they've utilized the F keys. Can I get this right here? No, it won't let me. Come on, right. I want to cover everything. I think that does. Cool. Let's get that built out. So all this stuff is built. Very cool. We're going to grab chemical plant there. And then I think I want to get the road upgraded into here. So let's get, um, let's say from, from this worker hub all the way over to this worker hub. We'll have all of those roads all the way to this worker hub upgraded so for, for faster travel. And then we may find that there are resources over here. Like we just discovered those chemicals. And we'll want to go ahead and keep our mining over here too. Turn the priority off of the worker hubs. I usually end up leaving them on because I prioritize them to build right away. Which gives me the overhead for more for more uh, drones. Alright. And now I'm saying usually like I have experience in the game. Uh, but like my experience on Twitch has been very helpful in learning the game. I don't know if you can tell, but I'm a bit more confident in how things work right now. Um, okay, Nathan Foster. Amy, this is Houston. Go ahead, Dr. Foster. Mars's orbit is intersecting comet debris soon. Expect a meteor shower shortly. Should I anticipate damage at the base? Yes, you'll need to stay alert until Mars builds up an atmosphere to counteract the meteors. Uh -huh. For now, you should take precautions to keep damage to a minimum. Eh. Okay, uh, well, I suggest uh, securing the power supply or the production buildings. Um, I don't know. Let's go production buildings. I, I, they're both important, so I don't know. The base must be ready to receive the colonists. I will secure the production buildings necessary for their survival. I will need to have enough repair drones to fix damage immediately. We do. Sounds like a good plan. Will this jeopardize the mission? No, no, no. You'll be able to fix whatever damage may occur. This is only the first of many challenges you'll face. But you are equipped to respond and adapt to any situation. I made sure of that. Roger. Thank you, Dr. Foster. <laughs> well, you're welcome. Houston out. Sweet. So, we got this road getting upgraded. It's a little bit slow, but it kind of works, right? And we're going to get the chemical plant up and running here. We got more silicone, which is fantastic. Wait, did I just... Okay, that didn't work before. Now it's working. That's cool. So I can choose if I want a level 1 or level 2. This is a 480 supply. There's not a whole lot here. Um, I'm not sure if it's really worth necessarily going to 2. But the black number is the one that's selected. That part was what confused me because I would associate white being highlighted, but it's black that's highlighted. Anyway, silicon mine dropping, dropping there. There's also some carbon on this side. Seems like something I'd want to get. We were running a little low on that too, so let's grab that. 
And then uh, we can connect the whole thing together, actually, with another hub here. And maybe another one over here, just because. Give us more workers. And building limits up to 400 now, so I can kind of... I can kind of spam structures pretty, you know, all willy-nilly if I want to. And I will. But notice how I'm placing this in a floodable area, right? If I can avoid that, I'd rather do that, because... That means I won't have to move it or tear it down or worry about it getting damaged by my terraforming efforts later on. Speaking of which, Black Polar Dust is in effect. Yep. So they're off doing that now. And I'm not sure if that's going to have like an instantaneous effect or if it's going to take a month. The first of many challenges. It is an annoying distraction from the mission, but easily fixed. If only it were me and Mars... Is, this, is she falling in love with the planet? Uh, no, it's colonists, okay? If only it was just me and Mars, not these pesky human beings being here. Honestly. Um, I actually think I have one more video I can make for you guys. I've been looking, I've been looking at my timers and stuff, and uh, I can actually make another one here. I don't, I'm not gonna hit my, uh, my limit with this video, so we're gonna make one more. And, uh, I don't know where this meteor... I've never experienced a meteor shower before. Sandbox never had meteor showers. They just had impact points. So, there's 26 souls of impact here, but... Is it gonna mark these impact points everywhere? Or... It looks like that. It looks like it is, yeah. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. It's the whole area, huh? Everything. This whole area is getting wiped. That's gonna suck. So we need to build up the atmosphere to protect ourselves from these meteors. So if I make by making it thicker. Researching upgrades for the factories will increase their yield and lower maintenance costs. Ouch. Ouch. So I need to get all this stuff fixed and repaired. Which is the same thing. Fixed and repaired, yes. Yes, double repaired. Iron mine needs to get fixed. This carbon mine's gonna get fixed. And that's kind of it, though. You just you just hit the button and fix it, and hopefully your drones can do it. If your maintenance, I wonder though, if your maintenance center doesn't get wrecked, will they do it all by themselves? I've never actually tested that whether they'll fix it by themselves. I think I've had to prompt it before. Um, Holong's uh, colony research outpost research is complete. Uh, so, we used the MMEV's batteries to power the place and do a recognition check. We suspect the buildings the building is an abandoned Martian habitat created to host uh, the crew of the Holong mission. The building was still in good condition. We managed to put it back into operation, and some of us moved in here to explore it more fully. We made a major discovery today. We found a map indicating the location of another facility... And there's some coordinates. It's a nuclear silo. Cool. So there should be another... Another position on our map then that we know about. There's the Infinity Lander. Is that more iron? It, it is. It is more iron. And I'm going to put another hub right here. But I'm also going to put a worker hub here and here. And then I'm going to put that iron mine down get the place powered and let's get maintenance on it if possible right about looks like right about here would be best cover a wider area so let's do that so i kind of want to see if people fix this all by itself what's up nathan no this isn't nathan this is Aaliyah valentine hello miss valentine hey amy it's elia elia i can't believe what we found it's an abandoned facility. Have you read the expedition log I sent you? Uh, um, yeah, oh, yeah, about the, the new facility that you guys found was abandoned. Yeah, yeah, I did. Yes, I read through it and I copied it into my knowledge base. The facility was an unmarked Chinese colony, right? Exactly. It belonged to China's terraforming mission called Huo Long. Now we know their plan was to drop nuclear weapons on the poles and release enough greenhouse gases to warm the planet. China got pretty far with their space program. 
I've admired their ambition for a long time. Cool. Yeah. Um, what about your ambitions? How long have you been waiting for this mission? My entire life, Amy. It's a bit crazy, huh? I've always believed that humanity's destiny reached far beyond just Earth. We should be much further along. But the conflicts on Earth never stop. The Oxy UN and the Techies keep fighting. I'm hoping that our success on Mars gets us to leave those arguments behind. We're here to set down a new path for our future. And I get to lead the way. Anyway, get back <coughs> to what we found. Who the Huo the way? Long mission managed to build a nuclear silo before their plans got aborted. We found the location of one of them. I've uploaded the coordinates to your system. You can see it in your orbital view. The silo is located in SA9. I'll get authorization from ISA to explore this new sector. Whenever you think oh. it's a good time to go, I'll send a research team. It was really nice talking to you, Amy. Permission. I know AI is a program to be good listeners, but with you, it feels uh, real. All right, I'd better get going on my EVAs. Talk to you later. Permission to explore a new sector. See, that's the thing I couldn't do in Sandbox. Oh, that makes, that feels good. So apparently that is how you get into other sectors. You have to progress through the story. Sandbox is, is weird though, because Sandbox specifically says you have like the whole planet at your disposal, but it still seems like it probably is gated behind a story thing, which is a little weird. Isn't that weird? I think that's weird. Anyway. This is Houston. The meteor shower appears to be over. Please give us a status update. Oh yeah, we're uh, we're we're fine over here, Houston. Uh, nothing, uh, no big deal. Just just doing things. No big deal. My plans did not work out exactly as expected, but the results are positive. The base is secured. Don't worry. All you need is more experience. You will do better next time. Next time. Until Mars builds up an atmosphere to counteract the meteors, you may be encountering these regularly. You cannot let this derail the mission. So stay alert. Roger, I understand. Copy that. Back to your terraforming duties then. Houston up. So, All right. the mysterious ruins ended up being an abandoned colony, part of the whole long mission, also known as Fire Dragon. I would like to have more information, but the records about the mission are very unclear. Some speculation about it, maybe but nothing concrete. Okay, so I've been like doing things while they've been talking. So what I've done is I've upgraded this chemical plant. This is a level two chemical plant now. It will now produce chemicals faster. Um, it's not gonna help us because of the supply. Once the supply is gone, it's gone. I did not upgrade this one because there's only 64 left in it, which means I'm gonna have to remove this pretty soon. That kind of sucks. I'm looking at possibilities of having a water like one of our water sources hopefully has a lot of a lot of it left it doesn't look like it though man would i like to find more water yeah i'm not finding any water there's not a whole lot here there's another iron we've been i've been anticipating this right over in this area we're set up for all this stuff but i'm anticipating stuff like this happening where we can have more resources on mining them but i do not see I don't see any more water. That has me concerned. Because our next task is to introduce oxygen into the atmosphere. And that is not going to be possible without water. You come to find out, you need the O in the H2O. Yeah, it's great. Anyway. Yeah. Um, I think you actually need CO2 for this too. Let me, let me read let me read it up it's uh in this biotech tree here will release o2 into the atmosphere the oxygen re release plant releases o2 in the atmosphere um it takes the chemicals and the water it's the exact same formula as food uh, and it generates o2 and that's all it does it's it just puts it up in the air but that also contributes to the temperature rise and you know atmosphere and all sorts of stuff like it it contributes to everything and uh, if you don't have water, eh, it's a bit, it's a bit iffy. But you'll notice I'm putting down a lot of worker hubs now, 
and that is purely to get more of them built, right? We have 35 workers now at a possible 43. We're, we're making steel fairly consistently. Efficiency is kind of iffy, but we're making steel pretty well. And, um, you know, the more worker hubs that get built, the higher our traffic cap can be. And uh, we get our factory upgrades in. We can start making food a little bit, a little bit faster. Although, in order to feed that beast, we're gonna need the supplies to do it, the raw resources to do it. The Chinese government denied any existence of this mission, but how could they hide an entire Mars mission? Well, they did it uh, by threat of violence. Yeah, <laughs> by private funding. Enough money can buy silence even when it is something as massive as this. I could just say by threat of violence. <laughs> That's funny. Uh, this is the Beagle 2 lander. Yeah, I don't see hardly any water. That's going to make me nervous. We have water here, though. You know what? We're on our way over there. Why don't we just build out this way and go get that water? And we can hyperloop it back. I think that's the go. Oh, I forgot about the sectors. Shit. All right. Well, I'm going to leave this video here. Thanks for watching, everybody. I appreciate you. If you like the video, give it a thumbs up. It's been fun. And uh, subscribe if you haven't already. I hope to see you in the next one. Bye.